Hey, hey, very pleasant good evening to everybody looking out on the red channel. We say once again, this is a lovely, 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 lovely Tuesday evening. And um, we want to get into some stuff as usual. But again, I just want to say thanks to everybody who has been supporting Red so far. It has been a somewhat challenging journey, I wouldn't lie. <laughs> I would not lie. It has been a somewhat... Why is my chat saying disconnected? I don't know what's happening. So, yeah, um, so I just want to say a very pleasant good afternoon. Everybody who's been supporting Red from day one, um, you know, I just wanted to say thanks to you guys um, for that. Um, and as, of, of course, I um, want to ask you to share the channel, like it, subscribe as the case may be, you know, give me a little thumbs up. And of course, click the bell so you know when Red is live every time. Yeah, so how has your week been? Um, converse with me. I see people already jumping in the thing. Yes, man. Sheldon James on the stream team. How you going, my friend? Nice to see you on the inside. Uh, Sheldon James, nice to see you on the inside. Yeah, man. Uh, so how's your week? How your week has been going? How 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 business? How finances? How <laughs> of course those of you locking on. Um, I hope you would have seen the the banner before, so you know the topic for the evening. We want to get into this because um, there's a big buzz that's happening around right now. Um, make sure my music not too loud in the ears. So, uh, yeah, we want to talk about some stuff. But before we get into the, before we get into the main topic, I want to I want to kind of preface this with with something. You know this. You know we have this saying. We have this saying in Trinidad. I'm not sure about other places. Um, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck then it's a duck right we know that right but then if i say if it has a bill and it has webbed feet there has to be a duck you know will i be correct and and the reason why i'm saying that and i'm coming to something because we have you know a lot of people take that and run with it as goal if it walks like a duck it quacks like a duck then it has to be a duck because only a duck could look and sound like that all right so but you know in trinidad and to be in trinidad in particular trinidad the bigo we have this 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 way about us that we kind of brand group things we like to group things under one umbrella under one heading because they look similar so for instance to us Chinese, all disposable diapers is pampers you ever notice that so even though you have teddies and you have hoggies and all kind of different brands for us all disposable diapers fall under the name pampers although pampers is a brand name pampers is not the product the product is a disposable diaper the brand is pampers but we call all disposable diapers pampers likewise the newspaper we refer to all newspaper as gazette paper but you know that there is actually a paper is a government newsprint called the gazette and that's where the name came from so because other newspapers use a similar type of paper um at least they used to at one point you know we refer to all of those kinds of things as gazette paper so whether it's express newsday or <laughs> is gazette paper but the gazette was a particular type of paper you follow what i'm saying and we tend to do that with a whole number of things um even when it comes to money uh we refer to all currencies as dollars but that's wrong the dollar is a type of currency the dollar is one name of a current of a currency the British pound, for instance, is not a British dollar. The British don't have a dollar. The British have a pound. That is the name of their currency. It is called the pound, the pound sterling. In in Norway and, and other parts of, of that the Scandinavian countries, they have the krona, for instance. We don't call it the krona dollar. It's the, the krona is the name of the currency, not dollar. Now we have different forms of the dollar, just like you have different forms of the krona. 
um in in chinese friends china for instance they have the yuan we don't call it a yuan dollar a chinese yuan dollar your form is it's a chinese yuan the yuan is the name of the currency not dollar but for us once it looks like that then as far as we concern all of them are different types of dollars no there are different types of currency and the dollar is only one type of currency right um i said that to say sometimes we and we have a habit of doing it as i just said we have a habit of looking at one thing and because it has something that resembles something else we say well, okay is this not taking the time and I'm interesting i was listening just before this i was listening to a good friend of mine who did a, a facebook live talking about same kinds of stuff along the same lines um with um, the question as a matter of fact which was his part two of a series that he started was is the bank a legal pyramid scheme and we committed that in a little bit but i was hearing all kind of different explanations and 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 you know stuff the suggestions being put forward and i realize even there there's a lot of misunderstandings and misconceptions sorry and of course by no means am i any expert in these matters but i think i have a, a good handle on what they mean and what they are and so we want to look at some things some terms in light of a current um climate that is happening in Trinidad and the Bay in particular of course other parts of the world but in Trinidad and the Bay in particular we want to look at some things and we'll be hearing you'll be hearing the names like susu pyramid scheme ponzi investment network marketing all that kind of thing and just like the case of the currency just like in the case of the newspaper just like in the case of the disposable disposable diaper we tend to lump everything in one so because one has something that looks like the other one then for, to us all of them are pyramids or all are ponzi's or all are you know whatever not taking the time to understand the unique differences and what actually sets one what is the definition what what makes x what it is for instance a credit union and a bank is not the same you don't say eastern credit union bank you know or or whatever credit you are just call a name right you, you don't refer to that and then add bank at the end of it because a bank is a particular although they both deal with finance there are two completely different institutions altogether they have similar rules with regards to some things but they also have different rules that sets them apart um one from the other so we have to um hey oretta in the house how you going love nice to have you on the inside joining us thank you thank you thank you thank you so what the, the thing about it what most of us fail to do and for some reason i think we choose we deliberately choose not to do because it's easy to just jump on the same google that we like to jump on ever so often type in the word for instance pyramid scheme and see what is said what is the description how do you identify and define a pyramid scheme as opposed to a susu as opposed to a ponzi as opposed to an investment as opposed to you know um so it's easy to do it but we think is we choose not to because i don't know if, if it is that we're afraid we're afraid to find out the truth because we've been believing a particular thing for how much years so to be faced now to realize okay what i thought it was all these years is not that maybe we don't want to do that probably because we've been beaten down on some friend you know for however long um having one stance and we might very well find out that what we thought it was is not that and so now to face the friend so we prefer to be in ignorance um for our own mental comfort whatever that is kind of thing you know but it's strange it's very strange anyhow so moving forward of course trinidad and tobago and of, by, the, by extension the caribbean would know that current and in fact the world because of an incident that happened but you leave that part there um right now there's a was a big issue happening in trinidad and tobago with a particular what was referred to as a susu uh, named actually dss drugs susu interesting name by the way drugs susu um so I, somebody i i saw 
some posted and was asking you know what is the explanation how did that name come about what does it mean and some people were explaining that the guy who was running the the susu um he 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 was for years his friends called him drugs for years so aka drugs susu um you know and some people have other things to say and whatnot but the thing is if i understand english um at least if maybe on the colloquial level no problem but at least when you're formally let's say the reporting and, and that kind of thing if it is that the guy's sobriquet is drugs and you're referring to the susu as his at least there would have been an apostrophe at the s to show that he is the owner of the susu so drugs apostrophe susu you know when you have apost if you if the if the word end in a s you put the apostrophe after the s if not you put it post before so like eric and then see i'll say eric's susu you know if 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 my name was stevens you'll put the s after so stevens susu but then they, they, so they put in this thing drugs susu with no apostrophe so is it really that the guy's name was drugs and the susu was his so hence they call it drugs susu or is it something else i just throw that out there because i don't see no apostrophe so to me it changes the meaning of the whole thing as i said we talking on a certain level is one thing but when you officially reporting and putting putting official documentation out there simple things like that is important so if that is missed then it tells me something um it tells me something and guys feel free to jump in on the chat drop some info drop some comments let's see your position what is your take on the whole issue um so going forward um so I'm be, i've been trying to follow that story as much as possible and you're hearing stuff from the police side you're hearing stuff from um people on the ground people who who got involved i'll, I'll tell you why i choose that word in a little bit um although some people talk about investing but people who got involved and a number of different things and i realized we have the whole thing real mix up and because of that because we don't have the correct information we obviously will not make the correct decisions we would have also wrong and false expectations because our understanding going in to start with is flawed is 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 missed is you know is not proper therefore what you expect to get out of course besides the cash you know but the way you expect the thing to operate would be based on your understanding but if your understanding of it is wrong then definitely when things go a certain way you will be on how come and why no something wrong here no nothing is wrong it went how it's supposed to it's just that you didn't understand how it was supposed to work right so a few months ago this thing came to trinidad again again because the concept has been here for quite a while it came and go and like everything came and go came and go with a different name so some of you may have, may have heard the word the name blessing circle blessing loom family and friends blessing circle stuff like that and the most recent one yujama susu um and of course they give an explanation and i'm not going through all of that because you could always find tons of that on the web but they go they went through an explanation to say well why it is called what it is and how it's supposed to work and and all that kind of stuff i remember one person started to talk to me about it and one of the first things he said um the people who told him about it told him it's not a pyramid and they told him it's not network marketing so when he started to explain i had to pause him and stop i said stop i said based on what you're explaining to me it is a pyramid and it is it has a level of network marketing so let me get that correct to start with so let's go down with some before i get into further let me try and define some of these things so you'll understand better what i'm talking about so a susu so it's, it's being called a susu all over the world it's being called all over the caribbean and stuff it's being referred to as uh, a susu so let's get into it. what exactly is a susu a susu and here are some different ways to spell it is an informal rotating savings club where a group of people get together and contribute an equal amount of money in a fund either weekly bi-weekly or what we call fortnightly every two weeks or monthly susu which comes from the yoruba term 
AC Su originated from West Africa but is practiced in many African and Caribbean countries and I might dare say even beyond that even parts of Europe etc over the years the susu has evolved but the basic concept remains the same Somalis call it Hagbad or Ayutu in Jamaica it is known as partner in Guyana a box hand Haitians call it Amin and if you are southern African you may know it as Stockville um, and probably that's the, probably the Guyana term is where the, the term box come from and I'll talk about what the box is in a little bit but that by definition is a susu let's take the first part says it right there it's an informal rotating savings club most the average Trinidadian the average West Indian knows and have participated in a susu at least the adults in fact there's a there's a there's an area in Tobago and one in Trinidad actually named Susu Lands. And that is because the people who own the property bought it by working a system of Susus over a period of years. And from, uh, from all my information is that it is still going on in, in some pockets, even in those, those areas. So, I have heard stories and know people who have bought houses, land, vehicles, started business and doing a number of things through susus good but here's what i want us to see first thing it is a form of savings a susu is not an investment that's the first mistake a lot of people making so when this thing came out and they started calling it a susu but then they start telling about investment right there if you had done any kind of research you'll realize now something wrong if it's investment, tell me it's investment, it's business. Don't tell me it's a susu, but we're talking investment. It's not the two not the same. A susu, 10 of us, 12 of us, 20 of us, whatever, put our hands. The hand is 500 for whatever period of time, every two weeks, every month, whatever. And at every month or every two weeks, somebody gets paid out their hand. We know how a susu works, right? But I'm just saying it for the younger ones, particularly who may not be. Um, quite aware and everybody has to make that contribution over and over and over until everybody gets their hand good now I only recently found out this part because all the years I've been in Susus I never heard about this there is something called box and as, as I said the Guyanese refer to it as box hand so maybe that is where the term come out from. I understand in Guyana, um, they call it a banker. And basically what would have happened is that, as it says, the susu evolved over the years. But basically what would have happened was that a group of friends or family members, you know, decide they want to do a susu. And somebody is selected as the banker or to hold the box. That person is not a contributor to the susu. All that person doing is managing the susu, make sure everybody pays on time. For instance, right now I'm in a susu, and the person who manages the susu every month end, because the susu is paid early the new month, at the beginning of the new month. Every month end, I get a text message, don't forget, susu, this month, bam, payment, blah, blah, blah. Every month like clockwork. So even if uh, that is one of the responsibilities for the, the manager, aka the admin or the banker, to ensure that everybody pays on time and then to manage the payouts so they would have a record who's supposed to get paid when so they will call you your hand is ready you could come and collect blah 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 ding 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 and in return for that for that that work that service per se um thank you thank you retta and retta by the way is from guyana so she would know and thank you for that confirmation um retta so in return for that service every time a hand is paid out the banker would retain technically they're being paid but instead of give you to give me back they just retain as a service the same percentage of what the hand each person is paying so if we're paying 500 a month for the hand every time somebody collects their hand the banker is supposed to retain 500 so at the end of the period, the banker gets technically is like a free hand. 
if you, if you follow what I'm saying. Every month, by the end of the 10 months, the 12 months or whatever, the banker would have gotten a hand as well for their service to manage the susu. And I have, I have seen it. It's not easy to manage a susu. So I think it's a fair, it's a fair exchange um, in terms of you know, paying the, the, the box or the bank, as the case may be, to manage the thing. Um, and that, that is a simple definition of a susu. Now, let me go down with a few other definitions and I'll come back to the talk because one of the other terms that is being used is this called a pyramid. And I, I was reading a document um, supposedly by the the owner of the the head of the drug susu the dss as they call it for short and he said what he was running is not um is not a pyramid it was an investment so let's understand what a pyramid is because that's a term that we tend to use a lot and we talk about pyramid schemes and and sometimes very lawful and meaningful opportunity we brand them as pyramid and pyramid schemes not understanding the difference so the hallmark of an unlawful pyramid centers on two key things one there's an upfront entry fee with the expectation of a significant payout at the um and the requirement to proceed to persuade other people aka recruiting uh, to join who then must also bring um and is usually two yes who must also bring Two more recruits eventually the whole enterprise collapses and the last folks coming in um on the wide base of pyramid on the wide base of the pyramid lose their money so what 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 exactly the same sorry so you have two key things that makes a pyramid what it is i did that in my early <laughs> thanks Rita. she said she did she did uh, susus in her early days um were you the banker by chance did you did you manage the box or you were just a participant <laughs> let me know uh, so the the two key things in a, in a pyramid one and and it's interesting we use the word scheme at the end of it and i commented that just now um yeah here's retta said my mom would always collect the hand july august times so she could buy our school books of course that's a good strategy thanks retta and you see how meaningful the thing is because let me real let's be real people if you try putting saving a thousand dollars every month so that at the end of 10 months 12 months you would have x amount more often than not we don't ever make it because we always find because we have easy access to the money we always find something that we, we need to touch it for but with asusu when you give that money to the banker or to the box you can't go back and say oh, here now, i have so and so and so happening this month i want to get back that hand i paid last week and i need to get back and I, I will see if I could pay it before the, you can't do that once you put that is it that money inside it no because it's, there are other people that would be affected by that and you need to understand you need to understand thanks Reti she said she participated you need to understand that from up front there are other people that would be depending on your input just like you are depending on other people so it's a community effort um, but if you try saving a thousand dollars a month for yourself to have twelve thousand at the end of the year more often than not you don't we don't make it we don't make it and that's why this susu has worked because you know when you put that money that locked away when your time reach you get your ten thousand your eight your twelve your twenty whatever figure um it is so let me come back to the pyramid thing so the two things is one there's a upfront fee to join first thing you're not buying anything you're not paying for any substance in return you're just paying to get in to join the scheme and then you have to now bring in two people behind you to also join and they would now bring two people behind them and so on if you look at the quote-unquote the ujama what was touted as a susu it had that factor to it now although they tried to paint it like a circle but that, if you look at if you look at um yeah, a cup. I have a cup in my hand. If I look at it from the top, forget the handle. Right? Logical. But if I hold it this way, so duh. Good. So when you look at the that at these at the 
so so as they call it you have one person who is paid out at a certain point in time that person has two persons they put it next to but it's really under because that person on top there who got the payout would have brought in these two so duh come down and then those two would have brought in two each and then those four would have also brought two each so you have one two four eight duh is not that a pyramid structure so so when did they started them well it's not a pyramid i mean oh gosh common sense common sense common sense it is a pyramid structure but here's the point i want to make a pyramid by definition is not a wrong thing and and i say that i don't know i want i want people to engage me thanks i'm shell and tell shell and susu yeah susu works susu works but a pyramid by definition is not a wrong thing is not a bad thing show me one institution that has minimum people at the bottom and a wider top section none whether you want to talk church you want to talk government you want to talk school you want to talk any business it's usually a small amount of persons at the top one two maybe three depending and as you come down you start to spread you always have a wider base than the top that's standard organizational structure anywhere in any business in any venture that's a pyramid so if some if the if being involved in a pyramid itself is bad well then all of these institutions are supposed to close and then there's a word we we use next to it we say scheme so what is a scheme a scheme is a large scale systematic plan or arrangement for attaining some particular object or putting a particular idea into effect on the crime side a scheme or underhand is is a secret or underhand planned plan or a plot interestingly though we tend to use the second definition more on a general sense but do you know that the nis the s in nis which you pay every month um for those of us who do pay is actually a scheme it's a scheme the national insurance scheme that's what it means so is it that something is illegal with that but you're paying it if it's illegal, you're supposed to challenge the authorities and dope it. You understand? So even the word scheme by definition is not a wrong term. The problem is how you use it. And that is why they are referred to as illegal pyramid schemes. Now most of us just say pyramid scheme. Lavlash. So we lump everything they know. But there's illegal ones but pyramid something being in the shape of a pyramid or in the structure of a pyramid itself that it's that factor itself doesn't say something something is wrong with it right now another thing with the with the pyramid is that um when you bring in your two people you earn a commission from that so you join you pay your money you join then you get two people to pay their money and also join and from that you earn a small commission from that notice there's no product involved there's nothing involved here it's just an idea of you paying to join and then getting others to join behind you and everybody gets two coming down the road hence the pyramid structure but there's nothing there's no substance to it good so people have have gotten this this gone away with this perception that anything where you asking people to join is a pyramid scheme the shipping company that i use have a program where if i refer them to somebody and they join the shipping company i get a hundred dollars off of my next shipping um payment is there something illegal or wrong with that? So technically, I'm get, it's a commission I'm getting, but I'm getting it as a reduction in my shipping fees. Rather than they give me cash in my hand, they just minus it from what I would have had to pay for my next set of shipping. What is wrong with that? What is illegal with that? So I'm coming back. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. 
so that's a pyramid in in simple definition the other term you hear a lot of people using is is ponzi so i was i was listening to again following up on this thing i was listening to a particular discussion and somebody say referring to the same dss thing and somebody was saying what the guy was running is not a pyramid it was a ponzi so, okay and this the word scheme actually comes after both of them pyramid scheme ponzi scheme so what's it what is a ponzi scheme a Ponzi scheme refers to a fraudulent scam that is based on an investment to clients where they are promised large profits within a short period of time um, at little or no risk. The idea behind a Ponzi scheme is to attract a new investor where old investors are paid off their profits from the new monies brought in by the new investors. Ponzi schemes survive on a constant flow of new investments. And you notice they're putting investment in, in, in brackets, right? In quotation marks. And when the cash flow runs out, the scheme falls apart. The difference between a Ponzi scheme and a pyramid scheme is that in a pyramid schemes, members are required to recruit others. And this is what I was saying. Members are required to recruit others and are paid an incentive for doing so. So the Ponzi, um, very similar to a pyramid. It, the difference in the Ponzi, there's no payment for bringing new people. There's no payment for bringing new people. But what it does is that you are promised, okay, you come in with ten thousand, and at the end of six months, you can make fifty thousand. And of course, the more people they have in the pool. The faster the money will turn over, the bigger bonuses, etc. Et that is basically what it what it is. But how did how that money coming about? It is simply taking the money from the new people and paying off those who came in before. And over time, of course, more people come in means more money to play with. You could talk bigger returns, which will be more incentives, uh, which will be more of an incentive to people coming in and so on. But realistically, it can't sustain itself. Let's look at it. Anyhow, let me do look at that. If you think about it carefully, take again the recent um, Ujama Susu. Every time one person gets paid, the group splits. Obviously, and, and for each group, for each person to get paid, there needs to be eight new people coming in for somebody to get paid in that particular group. And then the, what they call the flower, really a pyramid. The flower closes, um, and the two persons who was under that top person now become the top person in each of their respective groups. So one becomes two, two then becomes four, four then becomes eight, eight becomes 16, 16, 32, 32 to 64. You realize what's happening? So whereas you needed eight to pay out for one, 64 by eight, let me, let me do a quick calculation. Let me, let, me, let me pull it up here and do a quick calculation. So by the time you reach 64 groups, you need 512 people. New people. So you see, after a while, you're going into thousands, then tens of thousands, then hundreds of thousands. Then you start to go into the millions. Well, you only 1.5 million in Trinidad. And here's the thing. You will never have the whole population wanting to be involved. So it will crash after a while. And then... Um, Yes, you have a whole set of people who will not get involved for a number of reasons. So therefore, you're starting with a small pool of people, right? Now, although um, with the, these, what is being called a susu, um, the gifting thing, they have the option to re-gift for the cycle to continue. The reality is a lot of people are not doing that. That's why a lot of them crash in. Because people just is about what I could get. So let me get in early, get my thing, jump out. What about the people that you bring in? You ain't care about them getting their thing too? And then you would have encouraged them to bring in two other people. So you're not, in, you're not interested in making sure their two people get their business. And you see how it goes down? But no, all you're concerned is that you get your thing. You bring in two people and you get your thing. So whoever come behind knowing fully well that is going to bust 
a friend of mine was telling me the other day, a, a particular an admin of one of these susus contacted him to get him involved and they started to have a conversation and here's what the guy said with his own mouth he said when i did the calculation i knew that this will only last for x month that time and it could fall apart he said but i'm making sure i get mine so you knowingly trying to get people to jump in knowing fully well that more likely than not there will be people who will not get anything on the back end and you comfortable with it nah something wrong with it so the ponzi idea is new people are coming in they come in with their money and the, the money tends sorry the money tends to grow over time and the amount required and over time um you know you get after three months six months or whatever period you get your money double triple quadrupled you get 10 times you get 20 times whatever whatever that will only sustain itself for so much the way the the, the the name ponzi actually was somebody's name an, an italian immigrant by the name of charles ponzi came to the u.s in 19 just around 19 19 19 18 20 somewhere around there um and perpetrated a scheme where he was getting people to invest in a particular thing he was selling stamps i believe it was um so put your money he wasn't really selling nothing but getting people to invest with his promise of big payouts long story short he scammed people out of millions of dollars millions of dollars well worse than him is that not too long ago um just uh 2008 2009 around there there's this colored fellow by the name of bernie madoff bernard madoff that scammed people out of uh tens of billions with the same thing you know what's interesting i was looking at a video recently with this bernie madoff thing here's what they said somehow in people's back the back of people's mind they suspect that something was wrong with what Bernie was doing to be getting them kind of returns. But hear what? They close a blind eye. Why? Because I gained mine. They knew something was wrong. A man reported to the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, and showed them figures, documentation, graphs, all kind of thing why what bernie made of was doing had to be a ponzi scheme they find a million and one excuse not to deal with it why you think why you think think about it carefully think about it carefully and when you see the level of people bernie made of was dealing with you'll understand why they was having problems to deal with him but we will leave that there right you notice my clothes me I caught clothes I, I just <laughs> but it's a serious thing it is a serious thing so that ladies and gentlemen is is a point let's talk about this one now so one of the words people talking is that about again coming back to the susu they're talking about investing you can't put susu and investing in the same sentence it don't work because susu is about savings investing is a different thing altogether and to invest simply means to put your money into financial scheme and you see the word coming up again schemes unit trust have schemes first scheme and second scheme to multiply your money does that mean it's illegal no to put your money into financial schemes shares property or a commercial venture with the expectation of achieving a profit so here's the thing what is a profit a profit is what you realize after a period of time of doing business if you just put your money in something the money doesn't go anywhere it doesn't do anything they're not buying anything they're not reselling anything it is not being traded on no stock market it is not being traded in forex no, nothing what is the profit 
That's not profit. You follow what I'm saying? So then where did money to, to, to where did four times and the five times and the six time increase coming from? The other people's money that coming in. Right? So if you're talking investment, you can't mix invest and susu in the same sentence. It don't work. It wouldn't work. It can't work. So here's my thing, and I come into something just now. Now, by you, I'm not knocking the thing here. I'm just trying to show how the thing mix up, and it is actually causing com- some confusions. So I want to come in now to this one. We've heard this term, network marketing. And a lot of people confuse network marketing with pyramids or ponzi's logically and i understand why you notice what the first thing i started off with if it walks like a duck quacks like a duck then it has to be a duck but then are those the only characteristics that that defines a duck so a duck has nothing similar to nothing else what about if it has a bill and it has webbed feet is it still a duck Look at this animal here. It is called a platypus. So it has a bill like a duck. And it has webbed feet like a duck. But clearly this is not a duck. Because you can't just look at two things. And say okay if it has these two then it has to be that. So if you see a man with uh, pliers. And a roller tape, does that make him an electrician? Uh, electricians are the only people that use appliers and a roller tape. If he has a paintbrush and a tin of paint, is he a painter? Welders don't use paint and paintbrush. When they the rusty paint, you know, the rust proof, when they do a piece of welding, don't they paint it off and are they a painter because they're painting? You follow what I'm saying? Because you have a paintbrush and a can of paint home by you, are you a painter, a professional painter? You understand? So we just look at two things and we say, okay, if it has these two things, then it has to be that. But then there are other factors that come into play. So let's look at network marketing. Network marketing is known by a very variety of names, including multi-level marketing, cellular marketing, affiliate marketing, and for instance, I told you about the shipping company that, that I use. And that program is actually a form of affiliate marketing. You get people affiliated with the brand and you get paid a small commission some way for getting other people to come in. That's it. However they join or whatever, that is a different matter. But the company is who is paying you the commission, not the person who joined. Big misconception. Consumer direct marketing, referral marketing again similar concept or home-based business franchising network marketing is a business model that depends on a person-to-person sales very important word sales by independent representatives often working from home a network marketing business may require you to build a network may or business partners or sales people to assist uh, of business partners, sorry, or salespeople to assist with lead generation and closing of deals. So, very important distinction with network marketing. It involves the sale of products. A Ponzi had nothing being sold. Is money in wait for a, 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 a big payout because your money going to double, triple, whatever because of new people coming in? There's no product involved. You're not paying for anything. Your money isn't doing anything. It isn't being used to generate more money by being used on some financial marketplace or something like that. No, it don't go anywhere. Ponzi. Pyramid. You pay to join the organization or whatever with the expectation of some payout sometime. But you also have to bring in two people. And that is where a lot of people make the mistake. Because network marketing, most network marketing um, programs, not requires, but um, well, require in a sense. But it's not that you have to. Um, but they have the incentive of if 
bringing other people uh, of course to grow the network and therefore to increase the sales capability of the network which will now increase your commission now hear the difference with a pyramid scheme you get commissions for bringing people into the business with genuine network marketing businesses you don't get commission for that you get commission on the sale of products in fact many network marketing companies allow you to bring in people for free and you get nothing for that you only get paid when a product from somebody you may have brought in is sold so in other words if one person that you brought to the organization gets paid or, or, or buys products on a regular basis the company not that person the company pays you a commission because you brought sale you brought business to them what is so wrong in that and people people talk about well you know the person at the top making money off of their head and look at it that's so ridiculous you don't have money you don't have a problem going and put your money by all kind of thing where you have no idea what is happening with it uh, for instance one one person i remember one person asked me so um because i'm in a network marketing business and one person asked me so when i give them my money first thing you're not giving them your money you're paying for something because if you only use that term then you're giving kfc your money you're giving courts your money you're giving standards your money you're giving whoever your money but let me get back to it so they ask when i give them my money what are they doing with it i don't know when you buy a box of kfc what are they doing with your money you don't know so by that question you're not supposed to go and buy anything by kfc because you don't know what they're going to do with your money you understand what I'm saying? when you go by the furniture store you don't know what they're going to do with your money and we know there have been numerous cases all over the news local foreign where a lot of these reputable companies have been found in all kind of unscrupulous behavior you didn't know that but you're buying from them all the time when you stay from here use your credit card and shop on some of these online platforms do you know what they're going to do with your money you know so it's a kind of nonsensical question when you really think about it right but we kind of using that to kind of justify our perception you know that if it because our network market it has to be a pyramid but no 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 we get it right we get it right so genuine network marketing scheme um and they say scheme you see <laughs> genuine network marketing opportunities usually have a product or products involved one two you do not get paid when people join the organization you get paid when products are sold so one person could buy one product one person could buy 10 products or 10 people can join and never buy a product it's only when a product is sold when that person buys a product then the company pays you a commission from the sales good now we, let's talk about the commission part here's the part a lot of people miss a lot of people get on get have problem with the commission let me get the story first um i'm part of an organization called deal shaker um it's a global e-commerce network platform um merchants from around the globe th hundreds of thousands big about 135 plus thousand by now going just about five years old about three years old i'll be over three years and i remember talking with some guys um with a view of getting them onto the platform now here they say eh? so this one guy who is seen as their leader so to speak because he he has a biz a building he has his type of business and he allowed some of his friends to also get a space in the building so they could ply their trade but under one roof so to speak you're getting all these different complementing services air condition electrical whatever kind of thing good so they decide okay we're going to just deal shaker thing something nice you know because it has and uh, uh, we could grow our international clientele you know we we get a known blah, 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 blah. here's what one of the guys have problem with and follow this follow this eh? the same guy who owns the building that brought him in he was going to be the first one 
on the deal shaker platform and then his other friends were going to come under him so he's like he bring them in kind of thing now mind you there's no commission for that eh? but he the other fella started to get pressure because he don't like the fact that he going under his partner he already under him eh? he partner give you a space in his building to do your business now you're going you're taking things at a different level you're going to sign you up on an international platform but suddenly now you have a problem being under your partner why because he's going to make a commission on your head how silly is but he is right now you're under him is he have you where you are so even from a point of gratitude yeah yeah you're not even seeing that hey my partner five star in the house what's happening five star hey guys let me put a little plug one time if you're looking for a good top quality dj and i'm serious i'm serious i'm very serious with this you're looking for a good dj for your event whether it's corporate it's a wedding it's a, you need a good dj to handle your business hey talk to this man look for him on instagram look for him on five star post the handles now let me see let me let me let me get the thing out post your handles but you'll find him on on facebook you'll find him on youtube you'll find him on instagram um dj five star or five star dj link him up top 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 quality dj i i, I say this with no reservation link up the man right um so coming back to the but you understand what i'm saying so this man have a problem going under his partner because he feel and they hear the funny thing the system is not even like that but he come in with this preconceived notion because that's what he's been taught all these years that you run away with not trying to find out if that is really the case but he had a problem coming under his friend because he feel his friend going to make a commission on his head i don't understand that even if that's the case here's the thing the commission is not coming from you the company is what paying him the commission because he brought business in the form of you to them now here's here's a thing a lot of people here's a thing a lot of people misunderstand thank you partners five star dj 868 on all platforms nice one all the look up demand i am very serious with this eh? i feel i will pull him on the show and we just do a little thing and do some juggling and and just have a nice relaxed session but the man bad the man bad for this check him out um you ever notice you do not see typical network marketing businesses being advertised in newspapers in tv in in um on radio all that kind of stuff so guess where the commission does come from because a traditional business brick and mortar as we call it the bigger businesses pay millions every year for promotion and advertising if you look at the definition again of network marketing look at look at uh where is it consumer direct marketing direct or look at the other one person to person sales there are forms of direct marketing word of mouth marketing as some people say so where other companies pay millions to radio tv bill ads all that kind of stuff and put that out there to promote their business network marketing companies as the name suggests market in a network they depend on the marketing and therefore instead of paying the millions to the tv station the radio station they pay it out to the marketers who are the members simple logic but again because we got tied up somebody bamboos your brain pyramid blah, 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 you never took the time to find out and understand the difference so because they say well you know if you sign up thing thing or whatever you buy thing whatever you join thing you get two people thing forward you get a commission the minute you hear that oh gosh an experiment no friend we do network marketing every day for free and we have no problem with it you go on in a store you see you buy a shoe you like it first thing you do you jump on facebook post it up you post the price you post the store you even take a picture of you and the sales clerk posing with the thing guess what that store now get increased sales because of your marketing for them you get nothing but you have a problem 
when somebody do that in a legitimate form and the company pays them a small figure for that think about that carefully some of these same stores put out big thing come back to the definition referral if you spend x amount and you refer to friends and they join the program some of them give you a little loyalty card and all that kind of stuff that is network marketing people you understand so I'm saying that to come back to my partner because one of the guys i said he said they told him that the susu was not network marketing friend once you had a joint you bring two people and then people bring two people that's network marketing so what has happened is that unfortunately they try to fuse a susu element a network marketing element and a ponzi element all in one and that was a recipe for confusion it was only a matter of time before the program crashed my information now is that they have since removed the need for for bringing in two people so that element is no longer there and they're now trying to stick to what the original intent was which was a rotating savings club so now unfortunately some people still refer to it as investment it's not an investment you need to get that that clear if you keep talking investment you'll have certain expectations that are false and you'll get yourself in trouble but now they're trying to do the thing correct which is x among the people make up this group the input is 500 per person 10 a thousand whatever at the end of what period there's a payout and then you come back in so when you get your money out you come back in from the bottom and put in money again so that the people higher up would get theirs and it continues like that that is how the thing was meant to work if you're doing it like that bravo that is it but that my friend is not an investment that is a savings that is the susu Okay, what I say? That is not an investment. That is that is exactly what it's supposed to be. 15, 20 of us make this contribution. The money is pooled. One person gets that money at the end of a period. That continues for a while. Until and when that person gets the period, they come back in. Everybody put it in and then come back in. And everybody put it come back in. So over time, just like a traditional susu, it's not a one-time payment. You would have put in monies over a period of time. Any time is a case of you put money once. Once. But before you, you have about eight other people that needs to get where that money coming from. Think about it carefully. If you're not joining new people, you had to now study where that money coming from. If it is, I only put in my money once. But over a period, of, and, and of course, I'm open. Anybody involved in the well, link me now. Give me some information. If I'm missing something, well, tell me. But if I put in money once, but it's 20 of us in the group, but it has six people ahead of me, because the money needs to be pulled. So I put in my money, 20 of us, 20 by, let's say it's a 500, 20 by 5, that's a 100. That's a 500, 20 of us, um, that's a 10,000, right? Good. But before I could get my 10,000, there are six other people who need to get their 10,000. But I only put in money once. So when I put in, everybody put their money this wrong, X person get a 10,000. Now, that person may come back in, drop in a 500 because it's a, it's a circle, it's a gifting circle. So as you come out, you come back in. No problem. But there's only one 500 coming back in for the second round of payment. Where the other 19 500s coming from? You ever thought about that one? If I'm missing something, tell me now. But somehow that don't make sense. It can't be a one-time payment. You're not bringing in new people. 
but yet new money coming in so that everybody could get paid out something wrong something had to be wrong so tell me if, if i'm missing something guys come engage me let me if i'm missing let me see what happened guys. let me see what we don't on on the book if i'm missing something tell me let me let me let me hear what the um I see Kim because Kim mashing them up on Facebook there. Kim, where you going, love? Good to see you. <laughs> Let me see. Where is there? I why are only getting comments from YouTube? Why my Facebook comments not coming in? I don't not sure what's happening here. Um Yeah, my Facebook. I don't know why my Facebook comments not coming up. Nevertheless. Um so yeah. Thank you very much, Kim. Um Yay, Doran Charles. I see you see wrong like a table. I, come in a man. Let me tell you tell me where I'm going wrong. Let me hear it now, man. I need to understand because something ain't adding up ain't added up to me. This is what I want. I want to have conversation. So a man say I wrong like a ball. So let come now, man. Talk to me. Let me hear let me hear how wrong I am. Let me let me hear the thing. Give me the explanation here. How you could pay once, not have new people money coming in. But yet, you could have payments rolling out over a period of time. I want to hear, that is the one I'm talking about. I want to hear that part. I want somebody to explain that to me. I, I can't see any logic in that one. So, but once we could get around that, I good. So let me, let me hear that one. Now. Let me hear that one. <laughs> Doran, I waited. <laughs> Doran Charles, I waited. Right, so I wonder. Let, let's advance it while I'm waiting for for uh, my partner to come in. Let's go down a little bit. Um, so those folks, uh, those were some some. I, I tried. I tried my best to clarify. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, you, had, you make my heart skip a beat. <laughs> you make my heart skip a beat, yeah, bro. Thanks, thanks. I understand. No, it, it, something had to be wrong with that. Something had to be wrong with that. That's 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 impossible, you know. And as I said, the, the, the admin told my friend. He said, when he did the calculations, he said there's no way this could go on past a certain time. Logical, but all he was concerned about was he getting his. Now, mind you, in order for that to happen, for this to work, you really need a certain amount of people on a rotating business and everybody have to be committed to the process because everybody is dependent on everybody else's input it can be a case where you're putting your money and after you get your thing you jump it can be that it can be that it has to be a certain level of commitment that's why it's usually done amongst close friends and families that's how it started not random people just coming from wherever because there, there are other people who calculate this thing too and they know it wouldn't last. So their thing is coming once, twice, maybe three times and after that, that's it. And logically, other people seeing people's... So why you leave by? Take, well, bread stick. Them going too. And after a while, people just start to dust. It must fall apart. It must fall apart. Now here, here's, here's the thing too. Now, who get in? And they get so be it organize yourself i personally cannot in good conscience participate in something that i know fully well everybody getting involved will not benefit from it i know that far fact regardless of what you do based on this this it's generic structure it is so designed that everybody will not and cannot benefit from it. I, in good conscience, cannot get involved in something like that. Now, if it is a case that everybody could, but it is based on how you deal with things, how you treat with things, how you work, how you whatever, but you decide to be delinquent, you decide to be lazy, then you have nobody to blame but yourself. 
then no problem i inside i early inside sign me up sign me up already but if we know for a fact after three months four months five months this thing going to bust because the base will be too wide the amount of new people required to come in will not be enough to sustain it if you know that as a fact and you still falling in then i can't do that sorry my conscience will not allow me to do that understand now follow or not i want you to follow what i'm saying eh? the concept of the thing is good it is real it is something that has been happening what i'm saying what has happened is that they've they've gone on to try to infuse a ponzi element and that's what causes it to mash up if you work it like it was supposed to like a real rotating susu but you see what happened they're giving people this promise of multiplied money but then where you get it from you understand if all i have to put in is 500 and wait four weeks or six weeks or two months or whatever and i'm going to get a ten thousand or fifteen thousand or twenty thousand where that money coming from if you're telling me that we i don't have to bring two people then i i seriously need to know where that money coming from because it's not that just it's not like if it is you tell me that the money that comes in it is being used on in forex trading so there's a return fine it is being used on the stock market so there's a return fine it is be is, you're using it to buy and sell shares on different businesses fine the money is actually working but if it is just you just collecting it not going anywhere it's staying in your house it's not even going in a bank it just collecting and after x amount of weeks hold at twenty thousand. are you gonna find something wrong with that no 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 yeah Hey, my partner, Cypher Diaz. Diaz, come clarify it for me. You're saying, um, he said, I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm not getting my, um, my Facebook feed to come. He said, my statement is overgeneralized. Clarify for me there. Let me hear what you're talking about. Clarify for me. This, this is our next partner, man. I like to hear him talk to you. Just bring some good, solid points. Let me hear that, partners. I, know, I, I am generalizing. I am generalizing. But I wanted, I wanted to clarify what you mean. You say, my statement is overgeneralized. Clarify what you mean there for me. I wanted to explain to me how I could put make a one-time payment in something. The money is not being used in any financial market or anything. It's not being used to buy or sell anything. There's no new people being brought in. But yet, everybody is able to get this three-time, four-time, five-time, six-time payout at the end of a period. How is that possible? That is what I want to get clarified. So if you say that over generalizing, no problem. But I want you to explain that to me. That is the question I'm asking. So I I await. In the meantime, uh, let me just shift it slightly. So um as I said, my friend of mine, friend of mine was on Facebook with this this topic of banks being a legal pyramid. And let me deal with that one one time. Uh, as a matter of fact, he said, and which I know of course, he said he spoke to a, a police officer who told him. Um, pyramids are not illegal. Oh, and they hear that one, eh? Police officer told him that, that, that pyramids are not illegal. However, we keep hearing this term about illegal pyramids. In fact, Central Bank, on several occasions, put out these documents warning people about getting involved in illegal pyramids. Now, again, um, I want somebody to clarify. All right, let me before I get that right. So my partner Diaz is saying, I said I won't invest in something where any everyone cannot gain or share. No, um, bro. Let me let me explain it again. Let me explain it again. I when I say that when I say cannot, I said where where we know that based on the structure, everyone cannot, and that's why I went on the clarify. I said, um. No, no, follow us in. Follow us in. 
Right, I've seen it, I've seen it, but everyone cannot and will not be able to access loans from a bank or credit union. Fine, and I come into that. I've, as a matter of fact, it's banks I was coming to next. But let me clarify what I said. I said, if it is a case that based on the structure, everyone can, but based on certain factors, maybe how you choose to operate or how you deal with the things or certain lack or whatever, um, you fail then no problem with that. But I'm talking about where you know that regardless of what you do, you're going to end up with a situation where some people in the mix, it is just impossible. It is impossible for them to get. Now, the point about credit union and banks, why I take that, the thing about it is, why won't some people benefit? It's simply because they don't fit the criteria for what the bank may ask for so for instance case in point i went to my bank to get a loan let me just make the point i went to my bank to get a loan and they told me in order for me in order for i bank in there they have all my business all checks and everything they have my business account there but they're telling me they need certain books and i had to bring three years financial statements but you have all my business and so they say, if I don't have these things, I can't get the loan. So the thing is, it's not that I cannot get the loan. I can get the loan if. So I went by the credit union. I take the same bank statements, e-statements, went by the credit union, get a loan, quick time. But the point I'm making thing is, is that if you satisfy certain criteria, you will be able to access the funds from the bank, generally. But whereas with this thing and and i'm not just talking about the ujama per se all right understand what i'm saying the concept of these these structures because of how it is constantly doubling and requiring more people obviously you reach a point where you do not have enough people coming in with new money to sustain it therefore the new people coming in expecting to get their payouts in the next three weeks four weeks a month whatever will not get it and that's what i'm talking about so if i know that that is how the thing is designed then i cannot put my my i can't get involved in that worse yet even if i take the chance and get involved i definitely am going to get other people involved knowing very well that the possibility exists that they will never get what they want right so so to me the bank i hear what you're saying but to me the issue with the bank and thing is a little different um and that's why i use my case i am a client of the bank but yet i was able to get a loan from the bank but why because the bank had certain requirements for me to have to get the loan so it's not that i couldn't get the loan once i satisfied the requirements i could have gotten the loan however with these these um these quote-unquote susus there's no requirement the only requirement at the time was that you bring two people and that those two bring two but eventually as i said eventually there's no more two to bring <laughs> Edia said i understand your disagreement with whatever that is in la hoketa yeah so it's i'm not making a general statement don't, don't get me wrong if it come across like that i apologize and i thank you for that correction but i'm saying based on the structure and i'm coming back to that too so once the structure is not one that will just continue to expand because i mean let me just say all the people in the world join up seven billion people and at some point you're gonna need you're gonna need 14 billion because they need new people then it go crash you know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> uh, that standard you spoke of in the bank is only for a certain class. But but <laughs> I like I tell you, my father, I like him too bad. You know? Yeah, well, this it, again, again. That is our next argument we could come to. The point about it is the structure of the bank. But even if that is the case, hear my, hear my point. Even if that is the case, hear my point. The point I was making is, um, as far as I know, and, I, and I'm saying this because I could bring evidence. I, I have a, I, I saw a friend get a loan. I had the bank. I am in the bank. I couldn't get a loan. He walked in the bank having no collateral 
no kind of financial base um but yet he was able to get a loan in the same bank but i was in the, a client at the bank i have my money passage to the bank all kind of thing you know but the point about it is the bank would have criteria for giving people loans you may not be able to access the amount that some people might get or the types of loan that some people might get but the point about it is you can benefit from being in the bank there are things you could get um sorry to start with to be able to get loans from a bank more often than not you have to be a client at the bank which is a different matter altogether right but again understand the, the difference i'm saying um they said i can state as a matter of fact certain persons can access funds from the bank without the criteria for you okay very good very good now uh, while that may be so in 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 unique cases i like that again on the same point and yes it is a generalized point i'm saying generally the banks doesn't operate like that there there will be criteria for loans there will be criteria for 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 instance a credit card you know um i can't let's say i'm a i'm a i'm a client of um rbc i can't just walk into scotia bank and request a credit, a, a credit card and get just like that there, there are requirements one of them being i had to have an account there no granted what what my partner is saying maybe somebody underneath behind the door kind of thing might work a thing where i may be able to get the credit card without having to do that but, but the point about it is that mightn't be the norm however if i knew for a fact that unless i have certain documents i cannot get a credit card from that particular institution what going there for unless i know somebody who could get organized for but on the surface i'm not getting it so what going there for worse yet why would i recommend my fellow rbc yeah and also knowing fully well that they won't be able to get and that's the point i'm trying to make and again i understand what you're saying dears and yeah there, there are all these this this disparities with the banking system and all that kind of stuff which i'll come into in a little bit um my point again is is these susus as they call it based on their structure cannot sustain themselves indefinitely once it requires the constant recruiting of two new people by new people you will reach the point of somebody not being able to get their pay out and what i am saying me knowing that factor i personally i personally even if i get involved i am not going to recommend anybody else to get involved knowing fully well that it is quite possible they may not get their money back if you want to use it if i want to take that risk that is on me personally and it's from that somebody i was talking so me taking it that is one thing but me recommending to my friend hey hey boy this thing ba 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 thing, thing. and and worse yet not even telling him about that possibility you know and then so let's just say let's just say because i have actually seen this happen let's say two weeks after he he decided to join up program crash i got involved in 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 one business that was about um trading on the on the forex market and that kind of thing and after about three weeks you can't find their website you can't, can't find their website can't find their um, their facebook page they just disappear from the face of the earth now when the person told me about them i did my own research and i realized the risk factor involved so i took the chance but i wasn't going to blame my friend and say bread's that thing you tell me about boy the thing i will back my money no i can't do that mm -mm. i can't do that now if i knew followers in if i knew beyond the shadow of a doubt the thing only had a three month lifespan a six month life if i knew that for a fact based on how it was set up it was not going to survive with this structure over this period of time but i still 
decide to tell my friends hey fall in. after after being inside for four months eh? followers in right? it has a six months life plan i came in after two months so that means four months remain after being inside for two months i tell my friend it's only two months remaining but he expecting payments three months down the road obviously he wouldn't get i can't do that that is me as i said don't get me wrong people fall in the thing they get the money I have no problem with that. I'm just looking at the the logistics. Um, there's no product involved. The money is not being used to trade anywhere. It is not being used in any financial markets. It's not being used to buy and sell anything. Then you're mixing things. You're mixing things. If it's business, tell me it's business. Don't call it a susu. And you know it's, it's a certain kind of business. Tell me straight away that. If it's a susu, you can't be telling about investment when you're talking susu. A susu is a savings plan. Don't mix it up. Some people call it hybrid susu, but maybe that is why, because a hybrid, it is part susu and part whatever. But then, by definition, the two will clash. The two will clash. Anyhow, let's move on. But I, I, I'm glad for the engagement. I want to say thanks to my guys, to these guys um, for the the engagements i wish i could have get them live on the thing to chat but i want to close off with this one so somebody was asking whether the bank is a legal pyramid by definition the banks can't be called a pyramid they might be involved in illegal activities but they cannot be called a pyramid why because there are no fee to join you don't pay anything to join you pay a, you you put some money to open your account you have to start with, with, with an account, you, you know, you put money to start it, $20, $100, whatever. But you don't pay anything to join. So, by definition, it can be called a pyramid. Two, you don't need to bring in two people to recruit, to, 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 to create no, no um, sales base and all that kind of thing. So, it can be called a pyramid. It can, yes, the banks are involved in, in illegal activities. And look at this one, recently posted. Big banks move trillions despite knowing money was illegal so when you carry your money to the bank they want source of funds and if they're not satisfied that the money is legal the source they refuse to take it however and this is not the first time we've seen things like this where the banks are knowingly moving trillions of money that is known to be coming from um illegal sources um drug barons and and from the criminal underworld and all that kind of stuff and look at the document look at the kind of names being called and this is not me this the names right there hsbc standard chartered um douche bank uh, deutsche bank sorry jp morgan chase um the bank of new york um and a number of others it's not me saying that look at the document there go check it out so banks have been known to be involved in fraudulent and criminal activities but can they be called a pyramid no because you're not recruiting anybody for the bank you're not building a team in the bank you join the bank if you choose to tell somebody about the bank because you maybe you gain benefits that's up to you but you're not required to do that so they can be called a pyramid you have to find some other name to call them if you want to call it that um a ponzi might 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 again not saying all but based on how they operate and so a ponzi might might be a closer fit in some cases you know um we, we could see how that goes but definitely not a pyramid all right um so again i want to say thanks to everybody who was who participated in the discussion and again i am open um i have my views um you have yours and of course i in no way am i saying my views are correct i'm, I'm open to hear other views um, but I've given an explanation as to why I put believe a particular thing why I have chosen to operate in a particular way um, so feel free to leave comments in the chat you all can always reach me again if you if you if you want to um, you have any dis discussion you want to come on red and you want to talk you want to engage on an issue feel free to link us up my contact number is there the email is there you'll find me on whatsapp I'm on Messenger, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter. You know, and let's talk, let's talk about the issues because this is an issue. 
this is an issue for many people it's, it's a non-issue for some but it's an issue for many at the end of the day um let's look around and see what's happening to a lot of these these i don't know what to call them i don't want to i don't know i don't want to say schemes i don't want to say opportunities but these these programs for whatever better word um that are going out there look at them look at them um a lot of them that have maintained the original when i say the original what what we know they started with here um about bring two people and then most of them crash well let me just say a lot of them crash because they can't sustain themselves i recently saw the where admin car was burnt down i've seen videos and heard um voice tools where people getting death threats. of course you know people can fake these things um but there are certain things i see and 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 i'm aware of that indicate to me that these things are real persons getting death threats and all that kind of stuff you know because the thing can't sustain itself no more and and the and the, and the, the program crash on them since then a lot of people have reverted as i said they have removed the obligation to bring in two new people and it's just a case of um rotating who is already in the in the club for once of a better word because that's what it is a savings club rotating inside there there are still some questions inside there that's still kind of iffy for me and i don't mind engaging somebody who's running these to find out some more maybe there's something i'm missing um but but to me because you no longer require two new people it falls more in line with a traditional uh, or the original um susu model which was a rotating savings um savings club so let's see how it goes uh we only have how long we just about three four months into this this um this this susu, this susu craze that has suddenly hit hit trinidad um let's see how it goes all right so this is me from red ladies and gentlemen and of course as i always end up these days you know we in this pandemic things still not the last thing i saw the prime minister made a statement um do expect carnival now some people have already gone and said no carnival next year the man didn't say that he said do expect it if things continue down a certain road right he did not say we have no carnival next year he said by by october we would look at things and if things continue down a certain path and it doesn't seem to be getting any better he said don't expect carnival obviously it means closer to the date they will be monitoring things and they will make a decision better based on that they will make a better decision at that point i saw a document where rio has already decided to shut down their carnival so rio already made a blanket statement plain no carnival next year well our prime minister did not say that unless there was a, a second document or something that i missed but from the video that i saw he said do not expect carnival next year all right um so that's it so as i said with regards to this thing ladies and gentlemen my mask helps you your mask helps me it is not the only thing in our arsenal it doesn't mean the mask will stop the disease it doesn't mean the mask will suddenly cure you it it will help couple that with the other things that have been put into place and the mask helps so the more things i have in my arsenal to fight against this thing guess what i am going to go for it i am going to go for it i watched a video yesterday where this guy you know they've been the whole family i mean hands down they're taking every precaution they're washing they're sanitizing they take everything and the young son decide he need to go and have a little party with his friends brought it home everybody except one family get knocked down father nearly died you know I, I, it is necessary is it is it necessary no i don't think so i mean even though we're not sure what is happening a lot of people talking conspiracy blah, blah, blah. but one thing we do know people get knocked down with something and generally people who adopt a certain course of action you're not hearing them coming down with with this thing so until we sure i am going to err on the side of caution protect myself uh, protect my family 
and we're going down the road live. So let me say thanks to um, Oretta, Cypher Diaz, my boy, Diaz, um, Kim, Doran Charles, we had DJ Five Star, Stream Team, Sheldon, and other persons. Thank you guys for following in and for adding your comments uh, to the chat. I was hoping to get a little more from you guys, you know, you know. Even it opposes what I'm saying, if it challenges what I'm saying, I like that. Let me talk. Um, again, I, I, obviously, just like on radio, TV, and so on, the announcer would have their perspective and a reasoning behind it. But you might be able to share some light and shed some light on maybe something that I may have overlooked, um, you know, or may have missed altogether. And I'm, I'm, I'm forever grateful. So, again, guys, thanks for popping in. And that is it for me. So looking forward to seeing you guys next time on Red.